Good morning, everybody. From the Seal Islands of Flying J in West Edmonton. So we spent early this morning getting loaded. I have a load behind me now uh, that I'm just taking down to Nisku to a drop yard. And I'm gonna switch trailers, grab another empty trailer, come back into Edmonton, load up that other one like I told you yesterday and go home with it. That one should be a little bit less work. This one I had to, we have uh, multiple levels in our trailer. I had to load both levels. And this next load I believe is just one, one level. So it should be simple enough. So let's get this day going. We gotta get reloaded and head home. Get this window fixed. So we spent the night just across the street there at the Esso. Because apparently the Flying J here wants you to pay to park overnight. I don't know if that's still true or not, but last time I went and asked at the field desk and they said, yep, you gotta pay. So I'm like, nope, I don't. I'll just go across the street and park there. In 100 meters, turn right on 170 Street. I still refuse to pay for parking. I can find anywhere else to bring my business. But then again, I did go back to Flying J for their fuel, so I guess they got me anyway. Oh well, oh well. It's because this Flying J here isn't an actual Flying J. It's uh, we just got a yield here, right? Yeah, we got a yield. It's a, a private truck stop that just has Flying J fuel. Make our way onto Highway 16 Yellowhead Trail, Trans Canada West. And I believe we're gonna take the uh, Edmonton meters, perimeter or something. Take the entrance to the left on Highway 16 West. I just told them that, Karen. You never listen. We're gonna take what uh, Edmonton's like west perimeter, I guess, around to the south, and then Nisku is like directly south, almost a suburb already of Edmonton. It's just below the city, so it won't take too long to get there. Looks like it'll take about uh, about a half hour. I've got a different box behind me now. We're wandering back into the city. Somewhere I have to turn here. So this should be pretty quick, you know, just back in the dock, they load up the box, you close the doors, you go home. In 600 meters, turn right on 51 Avenue. 51 Avenue. We call those avenues in the real world, Karen. Avenue. Motorcycles. Oh, that's such a good sight to In see. 300 meters, turn right on 51 Avenue. I wish Manitoba Public Insurance would get their act together on motorcycles to make them actually affordable to ride. They're so expensive to insure. It's ridiculous. I like like mine. Mine's been parked for a couple of years now because it's just too expensive to insure. One of these years I'll get back to it. I'd actually like to trade it in for a Harley one of these years, but I don't want to sell it. So it's just sitting. Till I can uh, budget properly, is it costs a fortune. It costs something like what eighteen hundred dollars a year to insure your motorcycle, and uh, you don't have any other options. It's all public insurance. I think it's about eighteen hundred dollars, but that's probably gone up by now. It could be over two thousand, and you have to pay that full amount if you want to do in monthly payments. You have to pay it in the six months of the riding season. So your insurance is like three hundred fifty to four hundred bucks a month. It's just, I don't know. I've heard of other places where motorcycle insurance isn't so ridiculous. Go on, bud. You take your little fancy little trailer there and you give her. I think I want to turn here anyway. Guess I should turn my signaling device on like a normal human being. Who's honking? This dog here is just loving going for a ride. I was hoping we'd come up beside him. He's in this uh, white blazer here. 
it's just barking away. It's trying to bite the air, I think. <laughs> Diesel, you see that? What's he barking at, man? I think it, that's the equivalent of humans going woo on a roller coaster. <laughs> He's just barking away. <laughs> Here, we're gonna come up beside him now. Look at him go. <laughs> Having the time of his life. I'm being loaded and notice how I'm just sitting here eating chocolate this is my life now they're going in and out of the trailer right now oh oh there they are feel that so much easier and I can just sit here in the sunshine, relax, eat some chocolate. And you know what I do once they're done loading me? I pull forward a few meters and I close the doors. Man, on flatbed, you'd have to be out there telling them where you want it loaded so that the, the weight is evenly distributed. Now, if they load it with too much weight in front of the trailer, I just slide my axles forward a little bit. It balances out the weight. No worries. I'd be down there tying it down, strapping it, chaining it. Nope. Life's a lot easier now. <laughs> it's not always this easy. Like I said, some of our freight... Uh, we have like a bi-level trailer and it takes quite a bit of work to set it up and so it is quite a bit of physical labor still compared to what most dry van loads would be but this one's just one of those easy ones you just back into the dock they throw the stuff in the box you close the box you leave it's a nice break well i guess we can make ourselves useful in the meantime i'm just gonna go back here and oh where'd it go oh it fell down there Get my cleaning supplies. Wow! Hope they don't drop them all over the place. Do some trucker Josh disinfecting and cleaning. Probably just use the. Everything's disinfected already. I just want to get all the dust off of here. And oh no! But I'm out of paper towel. That's right. I need to go back to my stash. Don't look. I don't want anyone to know where my stash is. It's a secret. You're still looking. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There we go. I come locked and loaded, fully supplied. All right. So now we just give everything here a quick little squirt and a little wipe. And we at least uh, make use of our time off here. Get all the dust off my dash. That uh, creature I have with me. No, not not myself. The, the smarter one, Diesel. Uh, he is a dust magnet when he's outside. And then he comes into the truck here and he is a dust dispenser. Man, does he collect dust. And somehow, it all leaves his body when he's in the truck. Like, when he's in the truck, there's I have to clean this thing so much more often. And it's just dust. It's not even hair. It's just, he collects all the dust. Well, that's okay. Because we love him anyway. Dust and all. It's a little hot in here. I can't roll down that window still. I wasn't even getting all the dust off of here. What's going on? I like to have everything clean.
cleaning with Trucker Josh. Not what you expected when you clicked on my video today. I'm full of surprises. I like to keep you on your toes. You never know what to expect. I don't know what could happen tomorrow. Who knows? Alrighty, we're all loaded up, sealed. We got her in gear. Brakes are released. Here we go. Lock the doors so we don't fall out. Really light load. Only 12,000 kilograms. So, 25 for 26,000 pounds. That's what the paperwork said, but it really feels like there's nothing in there right now. But I saw it in there. There's freight in there. It's there. We're now officially on the road home. We have 1,382 kilometers to go home. Turn left on River Road. Quiet, Karen. No one cares. It's about 14 hours of driving to get home, so we won't get home tonight. I have less than that available to me to drive. Meters. Turn left on River Road. But we will be back uh, tomorrow afternoon, so this truck will be able to go in and get this window replaced on schedule with the shop tomorrow afternoon, and I'll probably be continuing on uh, the next day. Maybe I'll even continue with this load. Who knows? It's going down to uh, Corinth, Mississippi. Way down there. Well, it's the Truman Show again. As soon as Trucker Josh needs to make a corner, everybody gets on the road. There was literally no traffic as I was rolling up to this intersection. Now suddenly the whole city is on this one road. Excuse me. Okay, after this truck, this car, and then this truck, and I'm going for it. I'm going for it. Watch me go for it. It's not always fun being on the Truman Show. Now we gotta find our way out of the city. Karen, don't disappoint me. Where are you leading me? I didn't check your work. meters turn left on 50 straight no I'm actually gonna turn right you want to take me through the city I want to go on the freeway the freeway is right she wants me to go through all the stoplights and everything no thanks Karen nice try <laughs> can't fool me nice try trying to ruin my day meters, turn left on 50 straight yeah well watch me turn right you want to fight I'll fight it, Karen. We're going right. She's going to be so mad at me. Sometimes you just got to show her who's the boss, though, right? All right. Lots of traffic again. What time is it? It's 10 after 12. I guess everybody's out for their lunch breaks. Excuse me. this guy. There we go. Here we go. In 100 meters, make a U-turn if possible. Oh, this truck is so slow. When you just let it shift for itself. I have so much more acceleration if I just put it in manual and shift myself. I guess it's sort of like a, a fuel economy mode that it's permanently been set on. And I don't really have any say over that, so I guess I'll just deal with it. No acceleration. How do you know we're in Saskatchewan, I ask? This is how you know. Look at this thing. Woo! Now that is a farm unit. Look at that. One, two, three trailers. And a big case. 620. Wow. I just passed about 1.5 million dollars, I think. One of you farmers, why don't you clarify for me how much is that unit there worth? Uh, it might be worth more than one and a half million dollars. Well, that, that was a
a good, nice piece of equipment. Wow. So, uh, the Bucks have joined us again. Let's welcome them. Give them a warm welcome. Uh, they've decided to give their lives uh, in service to uh, letting us know it's summertime, I guess. It died on my windshield. Very tragic. But I'm not sad. I'm glad. It's summertime. There's bugs. I just wish I could get them to stay off my property, you know? Go somewhere else. Enjoy your summer somewhere else there, mosquitoes. Go away. Mosquitoes are huge this year on our property. Huge! Seriously, they could carry me away. Rolling through Saskatoon with our bug field windshield like a boss. I think I'm gonna take Highway 16 home. That's the two-lane highway. I think I'm gonna do it. Just for a different, you know, little change of scenery. It's 50 kilometers or 30 miles shorter. But it's two-lane, and you have to slow down for many towns. So in the end, it's about the same time. And since I'm only limited to like 100 kilometers an hour anyways, I don't really gotta worry about getting stuck behind someone slow, because I'm gonna be the slow one, unfortunately. But I'm doing the best I can, guys, as fast as they let me go. So I think I'm gonna take the 16. We'll see. The intersection's coming up right here. Every once in a while, I like to sneak down there if I'm not in a particular hurry or anything. and Just wanna see something different, you know? Other than that, it's been a pretty relaxing day. It's just rolling across the prairies again. What can I tell you? It's a bunch of flat land. I find it extremely boring, but it's home. There's those of you in my comment section who say you're not from the prairies, so you actually find it very interesting how flat it is here. It's, uh, it's flat. We'll say that. It's, it's very flat here. You can see your dog running away for three days. That's a perk. You'll never lose your dog. I thought this was the intersection already. Looks like we're gonna go a little further. But all the scales have been closed today, so uh, that means it's been a really good day. And they've been enjoying some time at home, as they should. Instead of sitting in their scale house staring at me, making me nervous. Even though I have nothing to hide, I still don't like people staring at me. It's weird. Whoa! Nice! sound better if it had a V8 though, I'm pretty sure that was a V6. Pretty sure. I thought it was a tuner coming up beside me, one of those little bah, bah, those cars. Oh, it pulls up beside me suddenly it's a charger. You're missing a couple of cylinders there, bud. You need at least two more. It's not a motor, unless it's got eight cylinders, right? <laughs> Here's our exit. Highway 16, Yellowhead Trail, eastbound towards Yorkton. Everybody watch out, here we come. I've only got five hours and 16 minutes available to me on my clocks today. So uh, I'm not too sure how far we're gonna, we're gonna get yet. Most of the time I gotta shift manually in this truck because the transmission does not know what it's doing. Slide right on Highway 16 West and then slide right in 560 meters. All right, everybody. I didn't see any of your signals on, so I'm assuming none of you want to come into this lane. You're giving me space. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. There we go. So it's four lane divided for a few miles and then uh, we're left with two lane highway pretty much all the way to Manitoba. We're all the way to Portage La Prairie in central Manitoba. Let's see what happens. 
Here we go again with the loose stones in Saskatchewan. This time it's on a two lane. So you have no choice but to pass the traffic because the traffic's coming at you. Speed limit is 60 kilometers an hour here. And what they've done is they've uh, laid loose stones, gravel and rocks on the highway. Doesn't look like it's as bad as it was when my window got blown out. Maybe that's not what this was at all. Maybe it was just like that construction site there. Some stones and rocks. They had signs here saying 60 kilometers an hour, loose stones, no passing. But here we got a 100 kilometer an hour sign coming back up. So it must not be the same thing. Okay. Good. Good. I thought it was another zone like that. Turned out I was wrong. It was just that construction site, I guess. They uh, were worried about gravel being dragged onto the highway from those machines. Still, we, we got to end that. Somehow get them to stop fixing. I think they call it chip and seal, right? Is that what they call it? Where they lay the gravel down and then they just trust that people will slow down and they never do. And then stuff like this happens. Ridiculous, redonkulous. Well, that wasn't as exciting as I thought it might be, but. You guys know what I'm talking about. They keep fixing roads that way. It just drives me nuts. Wrecks everyone's vehicles. Well, a weasel. That's all she wrote. That's all she wrote. I am so tired. We're in Yorkton, Saskatchewan. What a long day. That was a about a 12-hour day. No, more than that. Plus my afternoon. That was a long day. Ugh. I'm going to bed right here. I'll see you right here. Tomorrow morning, I'm too tired to say anything else.